What's up internet? My name is John Bromit of Crusoe Design Co. And in this video, we're gonna talk about why locking your PDFs is essentially pointless. In order to talk about why it's pointless, let's talk about why people do it in the first place. And the main reason why they're gonna do it is because maybe they've got vector illustrations, or maybe they have logos or things of that nature that they don't want you to be able to copy or steal or sometimes even print. Now there's different ways to lock a PDF. You can actually set different parameters for what people are allowed to do with that PDF. One of them would be just viewing it. You have to enter a password to even view the PDF. That's less common. More common ways to do it is that you can view the PDF. You can sometimes even copy the text. You might even be able to print it, although you can decide what resolution you're allowed to print it at. But the main thing people don't want you to do is open that in Adobe Illustrator or something like that and steal logos or vector illustrations or any of the design that went into the PDF. Now, many people don't like to rasterize the images in their PDFs for the sake of presentations. And the reason for that is because it makes the file size larger. And a lot of times the quality of the image may not look as good if someone's viewing it on their computer. One of the main reasons graphic designers are gonna be locking their PDFs is to show presentations of their logos and their work to their clients. And perhaps you've only got a deposit. Hopefully you've got paid something. You should know that. But whether you've only got a deposit, you definitely don't wanna give them a full file that they can then take and not pay you the rest of the money and then they've got all the work that you've put in. So a lot of people will choose to lock a PDF or rasterize a PDF. And I'm gonna to explain to you why rasterizing a PDF is actually better and how to make it look as good as possible. And the main reason is that with the internet, it is now extremely easy to unlock a PDF. Let me show you on the computer how easy it is. Okay, so let's say that you've got this PDF set up and for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna use this one illustration and as you can see, it's fully vector. And in my case, I don't want to give this to the client until it's done and fully paid for. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to cut in real quick. I'm very lazy. If you guys want me to keep making videos, I need you to click subscribe. I need you to click the thumbs up and even tell a couple friends because I'm so lazy and I don't like making videos. Actually, I do like making videos. That's not true, but I'm still lazy and it's just easier to not make them, but I will keep making them for you if you click subscribe and tell some people and stuff. Okay, back to the video. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. Again, this is just an example. So pretend that this is maybe a PDF with a ton of different pages and therefore file size is also something to consider when you're emailing to a client. Maybe you're just gonna send them a link so they can view it on Dropbox or something. But if you're gonna send it to them, you wanna keep that file size as small as possible. And sometimes if you have a large document, rasterizing it can become a problem. So I'm gonna show you how to solve that. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you how to lock a PDF in case you're unfamiliar with it from Illustrator. And then we're gonna show you how easy it is to unlock it, unfortunately. So all you have to do is go to file and then to save as. Select where you're gonna save it. In this case, I'll do the desktop and we'll hit save. So you can choose to use any of these Adobe presets. I've got a few that are preset up, but for the sake of it, we'll just skip over to security. So you have the option here to require a password just to open the document. This is for pretty sensitive stuff, probably reading things that, you know, you wanna make sure it doesn't get passed around the internet. Again, that's something I'm not really ever using, but it's nice to have. So this is what we're gonna be using. We're gonna check, use a password to restrict editing security and permission settings. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in a password. We want it to be really uncrackable. So I'm gonna use the super secure one, two, three, four. And naturally I wanna be able to remember this password, although most of the time I'm gonna be saving my own document anyways, but it's nice to know what it is. So now you can make some decisions here. You can allow them to print high resolution or you can make them print only low resolution. That's usually what I'm gonna do. Or you could even say no printing. That's, you know, up to you. The next thing are changes allowed. I'm gonna select none. You have a few other options there. And you can enable copying of text, images, and other content. I'm gonna deselect that. I'm gonna leave enable text access of screen reader devices for the visually impaired. But again, you can turn that off depending on who you're sending it to. So we're gonna go ahead and click save. It's gonna make sure that I know my password. Again, it's very uncrackable. So we'll do one, two, three, four and click okay. Okay, so now that we know how that's saved, we're gonna show how easy it is to unlock it, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna open up Safari here in Google and I'm going to type in unlock PDF. You can click any of the websites that show up here. I'm just gonna click the first one. And from here, I'm going to choose my file. I'm gonna to navigate to that file, click OK. It's gonna upload it. I'm gonna pinky swear that I have the rights to do this. Hit unlock and just like that is unlocked. I will click download. Now if we go over to here to Illustrator, I'm gonna close this and we're gonna to go to file, open, and then we're gonna try and open that locked PDF that I just had. And as you can see, it will not let me open it unless I enter the password. 
But if we go to file, open, and we open the one we just uploaded to that unlocked PDF website, as you can see, it opens no problem and it is fully editable. All of the original vector and everything is there. That is why unlocking PDFs is useless. Now I will admit that a lot of people don't know about this, but some do and you wanna protect yourself. Now again, there's different reasons to lock a PDF. So let's just say one of the reasons is you're putting, a, say, a brand guide or a catalog or something online for your consumers to look at a product. If you're designing for that purpose and you're locking your PDF because you don't want people to steal your logo or something, that's fine. I Just do that. I think it'll be all right. If someone does take the effort to unlock your PDF just so they can get your logo, who cares? They're going to use your logo for some reason anyway. They may as well just have a good quality version that you made. I don't think there's any harm in that. That's a good example of unlocking a PDF is probably fine. You're going to stop the odd person if for some reason you care about that. And if not, if they get around it, it's not a big deal. You're not losing money and it's probably not going to harm you. The big difference is if you're sending a locked PDF to a client in a presentation format for logos or design work that you're presenting to them that they have not paid in full, then that's a little bit more risky. And you do not want to put watermarks on your files. Don't put watermarks. That just looks terrible. You don't want the client to know that you don't trust them. That's actually really important. If you put a watermark across something that you're sending to a client, you're essentially telling that client, hey, I don't trust you. I'm putting a watermark on this file so that you can't steal it or easily manipulate it. And that's just not a good thing. That's just not something you want to get across to your client. So again, hopefully you've gotten a deposit, but regardless, you do still want to protect yourself and not give them anything that they can take until they have fully, fully paid you 100%. And in that case, I do recommend rasterizing your file. Now, let me just show you a couple quick steps to rasterizing your files when you're sending proofs and making sure that they'll still look really good for them. And we'll discuss, you know, the do's and don'ts. All right, let's jump on the computer again. So here's the best way to actually protect yourself. That is rasterizing it. Now you can rasterize it at different settings. We're gonna go to object, rasterize. You could do 300, that's really high quality. I'm gonna go with 150. That should still look good on the screen, but not be optimal for printing or stealing, etc. And you can go ahead and click OK. I've actually set up a quick key to do this automatically, but I'll talk about that another time. So now that these are rasterized, we can go here and we can see that they're useless. It doesn't really matter if I rasterize, you know, this text and things like that, because I don't care if someone copies it or steals that. But the main thing here is that you want to be able to keep your file size down. So we're just going to go ahead and we'll call this WR for web ready. I'm going to hit save. And then from the preset drop down, we're going to go to smallest file size and we're going to select that. We're not done. The problem with this is that the file will in fact be very small, which is great for emailing, but the quality will also be very terrible. So we're going to go over to compression and we're going to change the down sampling to 150. Compression automatic is fine. And here's the big key. You want to turn the image quality to either maximum or high. Start with maximum, save this, and then check your file size. You can just click OK to this. Hopefully, like again, you're saving this for your client, so you should have a, your own file that you can always open for your own purposes. OK, so now that we've saved this file, I've just opened it in preview. You could open it in Acrobat or anything. But the good thing about this is, sure, if you get really close, the quality is not going to be good, of course, as if it was a vector. But for the most part, if you're looking at it 100%, it's going to be really crisp, really clean, easy to look at. But the best part is no one's going to be able to steal it from you. And this single page is only 66 kilobytes when I saved it the way I did. So, of course, the bigger your files, the more pages you have, your document's going to be bigger. But doing this technique will should get your file size plenty small enough to email. And that's it. This is why it's better to rasterize and then lock your PDF, unfortunately. All right, so I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope you found this video really useful uh, now that you should be able to know when to lock your PDFs and when not to lock your PDFs and just rasterize them and make sure that you're covering your butt. Of course, please do hit the subscribe button, hit the bell and the thumb is up and all that stuff that people do on the internet. And even better because this channel is really small and I'm lazy and I need the motivation to keep making free videos for you. Tell some people, tell some friends, share it on social media. Help me get the message out and I'll just keep making free tutorials for you. Of course, if you want to see my full length classes, click over to Skillshare.com slash Crusoe Design Co. I'll put the link somewhere down there too. And you'll be able to see tons of top 30 something classes now on all types of graph design related things. And you'll be able to check out my full classes for that cheap Skillshare membership cost. And you can follow me on Instagram at Crusoe Design Co. I'm messing around with TikTok and all these other things too. So uh, I'm basically on everywhere there. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you soon.